we have CPM running. CPM stands for Control Program and Monitor. The console command processor, or CCP, is what is presented on the screen, showing the file system and file directory. The basic disk operating system interfaces the console command processor to the disk drive system via the basic I.O. system or BIOS, in this case a custom BIOS. The file structure consists of a directory containing 64 entries, 32 bytes each. An example entry would be the file name, for example, wordstar.com, the extent number to which it is in which it is located. An extent is a 16K area on the uh, disk. The extents are broken down into 16 blocks, and each block is 1,024 bytes containing 8 records, and each record is 128 bytes which coincides with one disk sector. These are all programmable, these sizes, within the CBIOS, but this is the default setting. Here is a snippet of binary code of, of a few sectors on the disk showing the directory entries. For example, here is pip.com, here it is in ASCII, and then you have an extent number 0, uh, it uses uh, 3A records in hex and the location of the block numbers 16, 17 to 20 to 21 hex. So this identifies where the actual file pip.com is residing in the disk file system. These are all consecutive here in a, a logical sense, but in a physical sense they may be on alternate sectors or separated by six or seven sectors because of the way the disk is spinning when you're processing code you want to uh, to speed things up you want to be ready where the next sector is at the time that you want to read it or write to it and that is why you use a, tran a sector translation table which contains a different order or sequence of sectors than what is shown here diagrammatically let's try some commands in CPM. Let's look at the file bios.asm. So we can do a type command from the console bios.asm and we'll use a control S to stop scrolling the screen and this is the actual contents of this assembly language file. There's an editor available to edit the contents of text files or assembly language files. Do a control C, another directory. We can copy and move files via a program called PIP, which stands for Peripheral Interface Program. PIP allows you to copy or move files from one disk to the same disk, one disk to another disk, or from one disk to a printer, a serial port, what have you. It's a general purpose file transfer mechanism. Let's just check out drive B first and we see that it is empty. So let's use pip to copy a file from drive A to drive B. So we'll type pip. That starts the peripheral interface program which has its own prompt with an asterisk. So we will say that B colon drive B and we'll make up a new file name test.asm is to equal the file on drive A here 
BIOS.ASM, which is the one we just looked at. Drive A is now being accessed and read, and now the file is being transferred to drive B. And the return of the asterisk means that it is completed. We just hit return and we get out of the PIP program back to drive A. And we can go to drive B. And now we'll do another directory. And there is test.asm. We can rename files. R-E-N. And we'll give it a name. New. Dot A-S-M. Equals to the old name. Test. Dot ASM. And now when we do a directory, the file has been renamed. We can erase the file. ERA new.asm. Now we do a directory and there are no files on drive B. Another important program is the save program. This is part of the uh, internal DOS, uh, internal CPM command. It's not listed here as an external program. Save is used when you want to uh, save to disk a machine language program which happens to be loaded in memory on the computer. I brought some in uh, to create the disk in the first place, CPM files, using the uh, serial uh, port and the VT100 emulated terminal to bring in a uh, binary program. It's a hex 0100 in memory, in RAM, on the computer. So let's assume that's been done and we would like to save it to disk. So we can type save and then the number of 256 byte pages can be specified. We'll just use one for now. So that means the next 256 bytes starting at address 0100 will be saved from RAM to a file, and we'll give it a name, uh, program.bin. And we do a directory, and there is program.bin, which now contains the binary code from address 0100 plus 256 bytes, because we asked for one page. And this can be run at any time if it was represented a program file, or if it was a data file, it could be used as a data file in future programs. We also have assemblers, hex dump programs, and various other programs that will allow one to develop software. So an assembly language program can be written in this environment, a binary file can be created, libraries of files can be created, so CPM is an ideal program development environment. Now back in the uh, late 1970s and early 1980s, CPM was also used in offices and businesses. It was very ubiquitous. It was everywhere. WordStar is the predecessor to Microsoft Word. This is the original word processor. I have it on here on drive A, WS. Now unfortunately the VT100 terminal is a much newer type of terminal and it does not like to handle the control and escape sequences that WordStar uses to position cursors on the screen. This is why the directory or the uh, menu of WordStar looks jumbled. They're not lined up because they need to be pushed over and these escape sequences are not correct. So to overcome that I would need to get a real vintage terminal or video monitor that would be supported by WordStar. This version is version 3 from 1981. But the editor is running and if you type X to exit, it exits. So you can actually do word processing here. So we have CPM running on this computer. Mission accomplished.